Hey, I want to spend a few minutes real quick going over the basics of using scientific calculators for your science classes. There's two types of scientific calculators. We have sort of a basic calculator and a more of a graphing calculator. And it doesn't really matter what you use. Personally, I'm very fond of this very simple um, TI-30XA, 11 bucks at your local big box store. All right? And it will get you through 95% of what you need. But I'll try to go through uh, a couple quick tips and tricks for each of them. Even if you've long since lost the manual, almost always nowadays, your calculator has a manual online. All right, go read the fine manual, RTFM, read the fine manual, go online and find it. Go to Texas Instruments or Sharp or whatever else your model is and download the manual. For calculator you. When, use that calculator when you're doing your homework because come test time, it's the same calculator you're going to be using. Being a science class, we often deal with scientific notation, a way of expressing large numbers and small numbers. Um, typically, scientific notation is expressed on calculators in different ways. For the TI-30 style calculators, the exponent, the 10 to the x component of the scientific notation, is usually in the uh, upper it's two small numbers. And so, for a number like 5.0, uh, times 10 to the negative fifth, would, it would look something like this, 5.0 times 10 to the negative fifth, as opposed to 0 0.0005, which is exactly the, I'm sorry, uh, 0 0.05 is exactly the same way, it's the same number. Scientific notation has the benefit of being able to maintain significant digits in the, uh, much more easily, and it's good for expressing large and small numbers. Entering scientific notation is different on the calculators. Each calculator has a different preference. Notice some calculators have an EE button or for um, other large graph graphing calculators that num number may be a special function where you have to use a second function to get to the EE. The benefit of the EE is that this is a built-in way of expressing times 10 to the negative fifth. This shorthand notation right here is the way to do it. Oftentimes I will see uh, students use the, the little hat, the carrot, um, but that again can lead to problems. They will, they, for um, calculators like this, they will use the five times 10, and they'll use the little hat, which is an exponent for this particular one, negative 5. And while that works in this case, when you start to do more complex operations, what will happen is that multiplication event and that exponent will lead to errors in the final value. Like this, they have a built-in floating scientific notation as a function. So 5. 5 exponent negative 5, so 5 exponent negative 5, using scientific notation would be floating decimal, if we put it into scientific notation, second float, second psi, allowing us to easily quickly convert between the two. <clears throat> Many calculators, the way you enter more complex operations than your standard four functions, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, is by using the, the rest of the commands. And depending on the type of calculator, how you enter it matters. For most of the older calculators, or the older style, the number is written first. The number is written first, 2 raised to the second power, x squared, to give us the answer. So there's the x squared function, or the square root of 2, using a different function key, gives us a different. On other calculators, how you would enter those same numbers varies, where 2 x squared, in this case, x squared key, and again, these numbers will vary for your calculator, read the fine manual, and then you would enter and you get the answer, 
but for the square root, rather than entering it as 2 and then entering the square root function, notice what this does is it puts the square root after the num square root operand after the number. And so we would actually have to instead place the function first and then enter the number it's operating on. Right. So learn which particular functions require you to enter the number first and learn which ones enter the number last. Again, this comes with practice. Almost always the older calculators you enter the number first and then do the operation. Most of the newer ones it varies from operation to operation. So let's take a look at one of these examples. Example number two. A more complex operation. It's shown in the attached PowerPoint. Let's take a look at that. So if we have this example of this 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, et cetera, et cetera, the first part we want to deal with is the 45 times log portion. And so for in this case, we would enter the scientific notation part. 7.5 exponent 7 log times 45 over x times 1.2. Two point nine eight, which in terms of scientific notation and uh, significant figures would be on a graphing calculator. The temptation is to complete the same operation using all of the ex uh, parentheses. So basically, entering the six point seven exponent negative five times some parentheses and then multiplying everything out. The problem is you will spend 20 minutes entering the calculation and if you make one small error you won't know where the error is then you have to do the same operation again to to enter it in. So the trick the trick is to using our order of operations to start to work through the problem. So focus first on individual operations like the log function log 7.5 second e, e negative 7 it gives us that number and then write it down negative 6.12 which you would then multiply by 45 which is a negative 275 and then you would use the, something like the 1 over x key to convert that into another answer and multiply that times 1.23 second exponent 7 to give us that larger number and then multiply that by 6.7 second exponent negative 5 to get our final answer. Each step can be checked and you don't have to worry about entering everything on the calculator and then getting a syntax error or a mathematical error. Break the answers down. This works for even more heinous operations like the one shown in the final example. So again, rather than using the, the parentheses and other functions like that, just work it out. Order of operations says addition before addition subtraction before multiplication division. 7.57 Exponent 8, negative, plus 3.99, exponent 7, negative, equals that, times 6.43, exponent 3, square root, plus 1, exponent 5, negative, 6.52 times 10 to the negative fifth, the log of that, 4.18, divided by negative 4.18, divided by 1.234 squared equals negative 2.748 or 2.5.
the same operation with the um, more beastly calculator. Again, don't try to lump them all together. You'll drive yourself crazy. 7.75 exponent negative 8 times, sorry, plus 3.99 exponent negative 7 equals 4.7 times 10 to the negative 7th times 6.43 to the negative 3rd Enter 3.06 times 10 to the negative ninth, and then we take the square root of that, second square root, and then you can use the trick with many of the functions to put in the answer using second answer in this case. And so in this case, it would be second answer, allowing you to skip a, a step of re-entering that number. 5 times 5.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, very similar to our last answer, and you add that to one exponent. 5 negative, negative 5, enter 6.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, the log of which, again, log second answer, enter 4.184 divided by 1.234 x squared, enter negative 2.74, like 2.75. Okay. So learn your, learn your calculators. Try these calculations. If you're not getting the right answer, go back and take a look. Break it down into its simplest steps.